Hello, so uh, there was a question about uh, IntelliJ and Go. Um, so I will try to explain why I'm using IntelliJ and what is the relationship between the plugin and the uh, IDE. So if you go to JetBrains, which is the company behind IntelliJ, uh, they have a number of different tools. And the main one is uh, IntelliJ IDEA. And that's um, like a fully featured ID for a number of different languages with a plugin support and they support um, everything in, in a single uh, IDE. They have two versions. They have a community version and ultimate. If you register with, the, uh, with JetBrains uh, using your uh, HIC, if you have one or NTNU uh, address, you will be given uh, access to the ultimate uh, ultimate version. So I'm using the ultimate version. There is a Google, which is the new upcoming ID specifically designed for Go, but it's based on the plugin which they already have in IntelliJ. So if you compare the features of this IDE and IntelliJ IDEA with the Go plugin, it's pretty much the same. So I am using this one, so I will show you how to set up a project using the IntelliJ IDEA. I suspect it will be very similar with Google, but I don't use that ID yet. Um, I have a number of plugins for different languages for um, Ultimate, and I'm pretty happy with the setup I'm using. And I will probably not migrate to Google unless they have some specific features which IntelliJ IDEA will not support. As it stands now, this is a superset. So this would be a subset of what IDEA has. All right. So once you download um, uh, IDEA, so if you go to download and you download it, uh, pick the ultimate um, and make sure that you've registered yourself with the NTNU or HIC email address. So then you will have the educational full um, full license for the ultimate. And then as you see, you have a number of languages supported out of the box. Plus you can set up your, um, you can set up your plugins. So if I go to IntelliJ IDEA, um, I have um, the plugins already installed, so I will just point out where do you install the plugins. In my on Mac, you have to find the preferences, and <clears throat> once you go to preferences, you go to plugins tab, and then in the plugins you have to search for all the plugins which basically have Go in the name. So there is a default Go plugin. There is a Golang plugin, which um, I also have installed. And there is a Google App Engine integration, which is not specific for Go, but just for Google App Engine. And I have installed that as well. So the two plugins for Go is the Golang plugin and the Go default Go plugin. Um, I have them installed, so you will have a button saying install. You click it and then the um, uh, JetBrains uh, websites will be contacted and you will be installed those, the, the ID will install those plugins for you. So you don't have to do anything. Um, once you have those plugins installed, then when you say create new project, you will have a choice of installing um, a Go um, a Go project. So Go will be, I have, as I said, a number of different languages. So I have, you know, Java support, Kotlin, Scala, and so on, um, and Node.js, JavaScript, but you will also have Go. So if you go on in Go, um, you have to configure where is your Go installation. So my one is in slash user slash local slash Go. Uh, that's the default, which you should have on your Linux box as well, if you're using IntelliJ on Linux. Uh, if you're using Windows, well, you have to find out where Go is installed and then point um, 
to the installed Go version. Uh, all the SDKs which um, IntelliJ can find out will be here. So if it knows about one, you can just pick it. Otherwise, you have to, you know, browse your file system and find where it is, and then point the Go, Go framework here. Uh, once you do that, you click Next, uh, and then you can specify where your project should be. Uh, let's say we want to do simple hello. Uh, so let's call it simple hello project, and then you can specify exactly where your project should sit. Um, there are two typical ways of managing that. One is you will have your directory prefix of um, Google Home of where your um, kind of go. Um, yeah, let's let me show you. So if I go echo. So go path points to where um, all the projects which you install with Go will sit. So if I go to Go path, um, I'm inside users Marius Go work, um, and then uh, yeah, actually, so users Marius and Go work. Um, I should say CD not Go. Um, so the directory structure here is bin, package, and source. And then in source, everything which you uh, install with go get command, uh, all those, let's say, GitHub packages and so on, they will be placed in the source. So if I go to source, I have all those um, GitHub, Golang, and Go packages which are installed from the uh, GitHub or Golang and so on. Uh, so go get command will install your sources here. To be compatible, you can have a local folder. Let's say Mar I, I called it Marius local. And here I have my local projects. So if, if I go to Marius local, I have a number of projects which I kind of uh, do locally, right? Um, but I also have a number of projects which sit outside of the Go path. And those I call, you know, projects, university, cloud, Golang. So I have some projects somewhere else which IntelliJ can work with as well. Uh, so those, one, those projects are not managed by Go command line tools. They will be managed by the IntelliJ instead. So in my case, let's say I would like this to be inside a folder called uh, simple simple hello and I will have an additional folder uh, where my simple hello project will sit right so now I say finish uh, it says oh yeah this directory uh, simple hello doesn't exist so my path until golang is ready it exists but this folder which I just typed in it doesn't exist so it asks me do you want me to create it yes all right so now it um, uh, set up a new project for me and it will populate it with the uh, default you know main um, uh, yeah like the project configuration file um, you also have like the tooltips uh, you can read what they do and kind of learn a little bit more about IntelliJ uh, or you can untick it and never have it shown. It's kind of a good idea to to read it from time to time, so you get to know the key bindings and how to make it a little bit more streamlined for yourself. So now, once I have the project, I can keep adding files to it. So I can say, okay, uh, please create a new Go file in the project, and let's call it main go and then what what kind of file it is okay i can pick an empty file which will just generate a, a completely empty file for me or simple application which is you know hello world type of uh, print line um, and here i go i have a, a main go with the default main function and i can say format print line Hello world, right? Um, 
And that's it. Um, I basically have a working project which I can execute. Um, the triangle doesn't work because I haven't configured the uh, execution um, environment. So I have to click here, say edit configuration, click on the plus and say it will be the go application. And I want to run it in the directory. And you don't have to specify anything else. It's good to rename it to say main um, apply. OK. And just for fun, let's write one extra function. So let's write function add which takes a which is and which takes a and b which are integers and returns um, an integer and let's return a plus b okay uh, and then i say hello world and i say it's a decimal number and i would say at five five okay so what it will do it just prints hello world and then 10. Uh, the number is 10. Okay. Um, so now if I say run, it will execute the main thing and it says what we expect. It says hello world, the number is 10. Okay. Let's get rid of the hello world part. Uh, and let's do a simple test, right? So I will add new go file again and I will say I want an empty file and I will write it. It's the main test go. I, I will write a very simple test and the function test test add. And we say testing T. Okay, and we say, okay, I have my data and I expect, um, so let's say data one is 10, data two is five, and I expect if at D1, D2 is different to D1 plus D2, then we raise a problem. We say uh, T error expected outcome D got D. Right, so the expected is D1 plus D2, and then what we got is, okay, let's say result equals this. If result is different than D1 plus D2, we complain, and it will basically uh, throw, a, throw a problem. Um, Okay, so now how do I run the test? Again, I have to go to configurations, edit configuration, and now I will add go test. And again, I want to run go test in a directory and then uh, everything else can stay. I will rename it to say test all. I will apply, okay it. I'll try to run it um, and for some unexplained reason, when I do that for the first time, I have this test framework quits unexpectedly and so on. And I, f I don't know why, if I add the slashes here and I apply and try to run it again, it will complain again. And then if I go back and delete the slashes, um, and delete the I. I will go and it runs the tests, right? Uh, may maybe it's just the removal of the I. I don't remember. 
Um, but any, in any case, you should have something like this. So you should have your test uh, functions kind of listed here and the test should return OK. Uh, if, if the test passes, if the test fails, it should return, you know, failure. Um, the linter is already built in. So if you have something that the linter is unhappy, you will not have the green tick in here. Uh, and you can learn more advanced features, you know, as you as you progress. But at least you can um, add new files, reorganize your ID and kind of keep keep using it. Um, I'm also using it for the tutorials in week four. So please check the videos and see how, you know, how I'm adding and refactoring the new files and uh, refactoring the existing code um, using the ID. So hopefully this will help you get started. And if you have specific questions, uh, do not hesitate to ask. Okay, thanks.